If I have this CPU and this GPU, which should I upgrade first? Unfortunately, there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer to this question. That's because the answer can change depending on not only your hardware configuration, but also on the games you play and the settings you run them at. In this video, I'll be sharing some general guidance on how to best answer this question for your own unique situation. Let's take a step back and talk about why this matters. We all know that video games are just a type of workload for the computer, one that uses both CPU and GPU processing power. However, some games and graphics settings will put more load on the CPU, while others might put more load on the GPU. When one of these components is overloaded, we run into an issue called system bottlenecking. This means that your computer's overall performance is being limited by the weakest component. But how do you know which component is the bottleneck? For a long time, this would require extensive analysis of frame times, utilization metrics, and a bit of voodoo guesswork. However, Intel's new present month software introduced a key telemetry metric called GPU Busy, which simply measures how long the GPU takes to render a frame. This is different from frame time, which measures the total time between frames, including time spent by the CPU. By comparing frame time and GPU Busy, we can easily tell if our computer is bottlenecked by the CPU or GPU. Let's download Intel's Presamont overlay and configure the telemetry to show frame time and GPU busy on the same graph. First, let's take a look at what an ideal balance looks like. In this scenario, I've set a frame rate limit of 160 FPS to minimize latency and ensure a consistent frame rate. As expected, this does result in a tiny CPU bottleneck, which we can see on the graph with frame time a bit higher than GPU busy. This also shows why utilization can be misleading since according to these graphs, I should be GPU bottlenecked. The reason why CPU utilization is so low is because it measures the whole CPU, which in this case is all 14 cores of my i5-13600K, whereas Overwatch 2 is likely only using just a few at most. Now let's take a look at what a GPU bottleneck actually looks like. Here we can see that frame time and GPU busy are basically equal, this means that the GPU is taking just as long or longer than the CPU to render a frame. There are a few ways to fix this. Obviously, you could upgrade your GPU, but if you don't have the funding to do so, you can try reducing your graphics settings or overclocking your GPU. Next, let's take a look at what a CPU bottleneck looks like. Here we can see that frame time is much higher than GPU busy, which means that the CPU is taking much longer than the GPU to render a frame. Notice how the frame rate graph has a big gap between the 1% lows and the average frame rate. This means we're not getting good frame pacing, which could lead to stuttering. Again, to fix this, the best way would be a CPU upgrade. But if you need a free solution, your only option would be to overclock your CPU, since reducing your graphics settings won't really impact the CPU load. Now that you know which part to upgrade first, it's time to pick from the vast number of CPU and GPU models available today. I've been collecting a bunch of data on PC parts to figure out which ones have the best priced performance. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming CPU and GPU buyers guides. Thanks for watching.